A student does an experiment to determine a value for the enthalpy of combustion of heptane. The figure below shows some of the apparatus used. You can see that we've got our heptane fuel inside the spirit burner and there is a wick here which will draw up that fuel to where it will ignite here and burn. And since we're working at the enthalpy of combustion of heptane, we need to be making sure that this burns completely in oxygen through the equation shown. Then the heat energy that gets released by this fuel is going to be transferred to water inside a copper calorimeter and there is a clamp there for stability because of course we're going to need a thermometer in this apparatus and we've got 100 grams of water and so that will influence the rate that this temperature will rise. We've been asked to design a table to record all of the readings necessary to determine an experimental value for the enthalpy of combustion for heptane in this experiment. Well, we need to be aware of the big picture for this calorimetry experiment. Ultimately, we're going to be working out an enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole. And an enthalpy change is a heat energy change at constant pressure. So essentially what we're working out is the heat energy per mole. And this is going to be exothermic, so this value will be negative and the temperature is going to rise. And that's a big clue as to which bits of data we're going to need to collect. First of all, we're going to need to measure the temperature in degrees C of this water inside the copper can. And then we're going to need to me measure the final temperature in degrees C. And so that's going to be the first mark for this question, showing that we need to measure the temperature twice. And from there, we would need to derive the temperature change, but that is not essential for the marks for this particular question. Having worked out the temperature change, we can plug this value into Q equals MC delta T to work out Q, which is the heat energy change. And M is going to be the 0.1 kg for the water that's being heated. And then the specific heat capacity of water would be 4.18. And then we'd multiply this by the temperature change. And then to work out the moles of the heptane that has been burned, we would need to work out its mass change. And so what we would need to measure is we would need to measure the mass of heptane inside the burner at the beginning, or probably more easily, the mass of the whole burner itself at the beginning. And then we would burn it and we would measure the temperature change. And then having put the flame out, we would measure the burner again and look at that to work out what the mass in grams is of that change. And again, the mass of heptane burned wouldn't be essential for this particular question, but that's where we would go next. We would work out the mass of heptane burned, we would divide it by its MR, that would give us the moles of heptane burned, and then we would plug that back into the delta H is Q divided by moles equation, and that would allow us to calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole, and again, remembering that this would be exothermic. In part B, we're told that the student considered using a glass beaker on a tripod and gauze instead of the clamped copper calorimeter. Suggest two disadvantages of using a glass beaker on a tripod and gauze. So we're making a comparison here. So we need to make sure that we use comparative language. And so the first thing to say is that the glass is a poorer conductor than copper is. Or you could say that the heat capacity of the copper metal is going to be less than the glass. And so what that means is that more of the energy that gets given to the copper calorimeter will be transferred straight through to the water itself for the temperature to rise. And that actually brings us into the second disadvantage, and that is that the actual energy that's transferred from the burner, some of it will go into the tripod and gauze that's been added in this position between the burner and the actual water itself. And so that tripod and gauze would reduce the heat transfer. And then a final option is that we could say that since the tripod has got legs, that means that this is going to have to be a fixed height. And so that means that there might be more of a gap between the burner and the calorimeter itself. And so that again will affect the heat transfer. And it's most likely to reduce it because not only is there a barrier between the flame and the water, there is probably a bigger gap as well.
In C, we're asked to suggest two reasons why the value of enthalpy of combustion from this experiment is less exothermic than a data book value. First of all, this is a really common question and you need to memorise a couple of these options. The most common option to use is to say that heat energy will be lost to the surroundings and the surroundings are going to get this energy through convection currents from the air. It will go from warming up the burner and then that will warm up the air. And then a second reason could be that this flame might actually heat up the copper calorimeter itself and then that might warm up the surroundings. And so probably you should only pick one of these warming up the surroundings or some of the equipment options. But it is useful to note that occasionally they do say, other than heat loss to the surroundings, why might this value not match the data book value? And that's when we can wheel out the, well, the equipment might have got warmed up as well. So we're not talking about the surroundings, we're talking about the equipment. So in this question, we can probably only use that for one of our reasons though. The other reason needs to be concerned with the type of experiment that is happening. We are burning heptane. We've been asked for the enthalpy of combustion of heptane, which is when you burn one mole completely. Well, what if we don't burn it completely? There is no way of knowing by looking at a flame for certain that you're definitely burning it all completely. In fact, what might happen is we might burn it incompletely. And you could maybe tell by looking at the flame and seeing if it's a bit sooty while it burns, that would be incomplete combustion. But certainly what we can say is incomplete combustion might be happening and that would affect our enthalpy change calculation um, from the temperature rise. The temperature rise wouldn't be so high if the fuel didn't burn completely. And last of all, Part D says, suggest one addition to this apparatus that would improve the accuracy of the enthalpy value obtained. Well, really, in this experiment, we have got two parts to the apparatus. We've got the fuel that is burning, and what we calculate from that, remember, is the mass change of the burner. That's already going to be quite accurate. Not much will go wrong with the actual burner itself. And so the biggest sources of inaccuracy come from the water and what it is contained in. And so that means that what we're really focusing on is how can we reduce heat loss from this apparatus setup. And so the first thing that I would say is, well, let's put a lid on it and the thermometer can poke through a hole in the lid for the calorimeter. That would be my first choice. But you could also talk about the same idea, which would be insulating the sides of the container because the lid would reduce heat loss through convection. Better insulation around the sides of the calorimeter would reduce heat loss by conduction. And then a third idea along that lines, which is going to reduce both of these things really, is if we had some kind of screen either side of the calorimeter, or indeed maybe all the way around the calorimeter, that would reduce any wind movements, and that would mean that this would be a more insulated experiment. Either of those three, totally fine for one mark. Okay, that's the end of this question. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.